My fancy has not been sparked. I make a lot of skirts, but I am terrible at making shirts. I mean, not actually at like making shirts. I'm sure it's not really any harder to make a top than it is to, you know, make a dress, but I'm terrible at choosing to make a shirt or a top or a blouse. I'm bad at buying them too. I just see shirts and I'm like, meh, which makes me not wanna pay for them or spend time sewing them. But then I just have a bunch of skirts and nothing to wear with them. <laughs> but all of that changes today. Just kidding, I doubt it'll change, but I'm going to at least force myself to make some tops because I have all of these lovely skirts and I'd like to wear them more. So I need something to cover my boobs. Am I also just doing yet another project to distract myself from life? <laughs> yes, I am. The thing is we keep waiting to close on this house and be able to start the moving process and it keeps taking a little longer than we thought it would. So I keep calculating how much time I have left and I'm like, I think I have time for just one more project. So I do that project, I finish that project and then everything has been delayed and we have more time. So here I am doing another project. But again, I didn't wanna get into anything like too involved. So my plan is to make three shirts of some kind and making three might seem too involved, but I am going to make all of them out of knit, which somehow in my head makes them not as difficult, even though I'm also going to draft all of them by hand. I don't know, don't question it. Just go with it, it'll be grand. And my goal with these three tops is that each one can be worn with at least two of these skirts and one pair of pants. I'm including that because it's the only pair that I've made that I wear. Okay, let me put these all back in my closet so we can move on. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, which is why I'm wearing my shark sweater in the middle of summer. Worth it. I'm not exactly the most careful in my sewing room. Safety? What's that? Mistakes? We're besties. But online safety? That's a different story. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network that encrypts your data, keeping your online activity safe and private. There are so many reasons why using a VPN is just a smart idea. Sending files privately, staying anonymous on public Wi-Fi, content. I watch a lot of it, I'm always running out of it, and I have a certain proclivity for British programs that aren't always available in America. With a VPN, wha-bam! I'm transported to London, and there's a whole new world of TV shows available to me. And speaking of going abroad, have you heard of price discrimination? Yeah, I had to, but I hadn't really experienced it until my trip to France this year. Using a VPN saved me big bucks when booking flights, rental cars, and even hotels. Like, bucks of extraordinary size. If you haven't tried a VPN yet, well, what are you waiting for? Get Surfshark VPN by following the link in the description and use promo code THESTITCHERY for an exclusive offer and three extra months for free. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and now let's go make some tops. Okay, so I dug through my fabric stash because well, obviously I'm just gonna use fabric I have for this. And yes, there's four here because I said I'm gonna make three tops, but then I think I'm gonna make a bonus top. So actually it'll be four tops, but by calling it a bonus top, I'm tricking my brain into thinking that I'm not making this project bigger. Even though I am. Shh. I went with a kind of creamy white because that can go with a lot of stuff. Um, This matched something. I've already forgotten which ones. This pretty silky pinky stuff. I think would look super cute with my bright yellow satin skirt. And then, yeah, this is like a really small piece of fabric I have, but I love some black and white check. And I wanted to challenge myself to see if I can get a shirt, a top, a very basic, I'm thinking like tank top, out of this amount of fabric. I think I can. So let me show you my design plans. And I've seen your complaints that you can't see when I draw in pencil. I've seen your suggestions that I draw with a pen or a Sharpie. That stresses me out. When you're like not good at drawing and then you have to draw something in Sharpie, whoo, no, that's not happening. However, I will compromise and I will draw my designs with a black colored pencil this time in an effort for them to be more visible for you. Let's see how that goes. 
And of course, somebody just started doing yard work. So I'm gonna voice this over later because otherwise the sound will be terrible. Since most of the skirts I make sit high on the waist, the theme of these tops is going to be comfy and cropped. With the cream material, I'd like to do a ballet inspired wrap top, maybe with some flouncy sleeves on there and long enough ties that they can come back around to tie in the front or in the back. The floral material, I'm seeing a milkmaid peasant style top. Uh, clearly I'm not seeing it very well, which is why I'm drawing drawing it even more poorly than usual, but you know the type, like little puffed sleeves and a drawstring neckline, maybe? I'm just very unsure of the details on this one. For the teal material, I'd like to do a sort of boxy, square neck, almost sports bra style top. Pretty simple in the front, but I'd love to do something interesting on the back like this. And finally, for the bonus fabric that totally isn't really a part of this project, just a little nothing I'm whipping up on the side. Yeah, it'll just be like a cropped tank top. And since the yard work continues, so shall my voiceover, which actually might help me get this done in a speedy-ish manner. No tangents in voiceover. I'm gonna start with the ballet wrap top sort of thing, and oh wait, I totally have a tangent! I took ballet class pretty much my entire childhood, and let me tell you, there was nothing that made me feel more posh or professional ballerina than a wrap sweater over my leotard. Like, we could not afford many cute ballet clothes, but at one point I got this maroon one, and I just felt so amazing in it. Problem is, I sweat buckets the second I start moving, and you know, sweaters are for keeping warm, so yeah. I always had to take it off after plies and maybe tendus because I'd be soaking straight through it. Lissai! Also y'all, I dug through so many scrapbooks to find these photos, but I knew there was a year that I wore my little maroon wrap sweater during parent viewing class. Vindication! Anyway, so here's what I did. First, I realized that this fabric is not one that I pre-washed, and it is dirty. It's dirty. But yeah, I have no patience for washing something when I'm in the making zone, so I just got a different fabric. Wee! When I'm trying to figure out how to make a garment without a pattern, the first thing I do is break it down into the separate pieces. For this one, that'll be two front bodice pieces, one back bodice piece, two sleeves, and two sashes. I sketch them out in the general shape and then start measuring my body and assigning measurements to each line on my janky little drawing. Can you measure between my shoulder blades? Yeah. You want an exact number? Eh, round. Eleven and a half. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Once I feel like I have a basic idea, I mark out those pieces on the fabric. Usually with pins instead of pens, because I have issues with drawing on fabric even though these pins are heat erasable. I ended up just doing tiny dots that I could follow. And in this case, I really just went for it and cut out each piece as soon as I finished outlining it, cause you know what? Why not take a crazy chance? Why not do a little dance? At one point, I questioned whether I would be lining this piece at all, and then I decided to let future me decide that and just kept on cutting. In the end, I was able to squeeze lining pieces for the front bodice out of this fabric. So I have two circles for the butterfly sleeves, two long rectangles for the sash, four triangular sort of things for the front bodice, and one back bodice. Let's sew! It's thinking time! Thinking time! Thinking time! I start my sewing process by having what appears to be an existential crisis, but is really just my face on math. Math. Felt like I needed to pronounce that more clearly. After giving up on thoroughly processing all the steps before me, I hemmed the neckline of the back bodice piece, then sandwiched it between the two layers of the two front bodice pieces and sewed those up across the shoulder and, uh, neckline, I guess? seams. I then sewed the pieces together down the sides, but I ended up completely unpicking that later so I could hem this shirt in the weirdest way possible. Don't ask, I'm sure there was a better way to do it. Before I got there though, I tried it on and realized that the armholes were definitely not the right shape. So I continued this back and forth of chopping off a little, trying it on, chopping off a bit more, trying it on again, and so forth until I was happy with the results. Julio, why am I shaking so much? Okay. Also, I had to slope the shoulders a bit. I've really got to start doing that on all of my shoulder touching garments. I sewed up the two sash pieces, completely forgetting to do any of the turning out hacks that I just recently learned about on the first one, which meant it took me a solid 10 minutes to turn it right side out. 
Whoops! Why? I did the string thing on the second one and shaved like seven of those 10 minutes off. Once I got those sewn onto the pointy ends of the front bodice, I ironed and top stitched the whole thing, and then there was this whole weird hemming experience, but yeah, it all worked out decently, and I ended up with this. Just had to get those butterfly sleeves on, so I laid out my two circles and marked a 7 inch radius circle off centered on them that gives me a 22 inch circumference, which is the measurement of my armhole. Cut that out and did a tiny little rolled hem on the entire circle. As is obvious from how I'm glaring at my machine, these are my favorite thing to do! The last thing I had to do was sew those sleeves onto the bodice, but you know it wouldn't be a Charlie project if I didn't sew something on completely the wrong way, and I was getting so close to the end without doing that, so, you know, I did it here. Ah! Why? Sleeve got sewn on inside out. Huzzah! But yeah, you know, unpick, re-sew, and the first top is done. All right, we're gonna move on to the teal one because I still don't know what to do with the floral one. It hasn't been worked out in my brain yet. This is a pretty thin knit, so this entire thing is definitely gonna be double layer lined. So as before, I'm just gonna break it down into all the different pieces, which is gonna be significantly more on this one because it's kind of like a piece together look. Then I'll start measuring, assigning numbers to those pieces. I do want this one to be like pretty snug. So I'm telling myself now that I should not do what I normally do and add like way too much extra measurement or seam allowance or whatever because then it's just gonna be baggy and too big. Okay, it's actually not as many pieces as I thought. Mm. Yeah, okay. Why not do a little dance? Okay, that's everything, theoretically. Let's go. When I'm really not sure how to start putting together a piece, I just sew the first thing that I know for sure will need to be sewn. In this case, I knew that those crossing straps in the back would need to be sewn into tubes and turned right side out, so I started there. After that, the other steps kind of fall into place, getting the center square sewn together and then the side pieces sewn onto that, using that front piece to help line up the crossing straps on the back, and then sewing that all together. Sexy burritoing the armholes, then sewing up the sides. At this point, I tried it on and realized it's much too big. Is anyone surprised? Hmm. Even without all the extra space I tend to put into pieces, I still hadn't accommodated for the amount of stretch the fabric has. I was able to easily take in the sides though, and then get the bottom band attached, and there we go, done before lunch. Done before lunch, y'all. Although admittedly, I did do a like sloppy strap adjustment after that because as usual, the straps were also too big. This could theoretically be a reversible shirt. Hmm. All right, so I have developed a delightful little headache today. So once again, I am going to skip over the floral milkmaid top that I still haven't quite figured out how to make. And we're gonna do the bonus top that isn't even a thing. So easy. I have a very small amount of fabric here and it should be plenty. And because I am just not in the mood to use my brain whatsoever, I'm gonna do the good old trace something that already fits you. So I really only need two pieces for this, front and back, and then binding for the neck and the armholes. Super easy. And because I can't remember exactly how well this tank top fits me, I will make it a little bigger. We'll see how this works. I could probably be cutting this out in a much better way to preserve fabric, but yeah, again, brain doesn't really wanna do anything. 
feels like the front should be lower. On the other hand, one does have to take into account stretch, which I quite often don't do. Eh, I'm gonna leave it for now. 12 plus 15 is 27. Wow, that seems like it might be small. This whole thing might be wrong. It was a bonus, it doesn't matter. All right, that should do it, theoretically. Let's go see. Pit stop for puppy cuddles. Even when he's annoyed by his recent bathing, he's still a great headache remedy. <laughs> Sewing this together was easier than easy. Just right side to right side and throw on some straight stitches. Okay, let's see if it fits. It does not fit. <laughs> Whoops! Luckily it didn't not fit too badly, yeah? Like, I could still get it on, it was just way too stretched for my comfort. So I ripped out those side seams, cut out two strips of fabric, and stitched them in to add a couple inches in width. Okay, let's try that again. After that, I just had to slap a little binding and a hem on, give it an iron, and bam! It's still a little tight, but you know what? I'm calling it a day. Bonus project! Okay, I had an epiphany last night while lying on the bed. I wasn't in bed yet, just lying on it. And I finally figured out how to make the milkmaid top. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna risk cutting this out on the cross grain? Is that what it's called? I don't think it'll matter. I think the combo of this dress and this fabric is making everything really dark. The back panel, I don't want to be as gathered as the front panel, so it's only going to be one and a half times half my body measurement, so like 24 inches. The front panel, I want to be more gathered since it's going over le boobs, so I'm thinking make it twice my measurement, AKA 32 inches. And in theory, this whole thing should just be the four pieces. Front, back, sleeve, sleeve. Mm. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have coffee sitting right next to my fabric. It's fine, I'm cutting that part off. Everything is fine. Actually, come to think of it, this is the salvage, selvage, selvage. So I actually have this fabric folded the wrong way, which means I am cutting it out the normal way, right? Okay. Okay. As is typical for me on the last piece in any group project, I sorta of started to phone it in on this one. Luckily, it was a fairly simple construction that all made sense, so my apathy didn't really affect the final outcome at all. I made a drawstring first, relishing the opportunity to use the straw trick to turn it right side out. Whee! Then I created an inside out donut with the front and back bodice pieces only to receive an unplanned physics lesson uh -oh. when I realized you can't turn an inside out donut right side out through a bite in the top. Damn it. I don't know how else to explain it, but suffice it to say, I had to rip some seams to make it work. Does this really not work? Okay, figure that out. There is most definitely a pin in my coffee. Did I just throw a pin into my coffee? <laughs> Good times. Once I had fixed that whole black hole conundrum, I added the channel for the underboob elastic and then moved on to the sleeves, which popped on the sides easily enough. The top of the whole giant thing gets turned under for a drawstring channel, elastic is added to the end of the sleeves to turn them poofy, and then I spent an entire episode of whatever I'm currently watching slowly stringing that drawstring through the top and evening all of the gathers out. Okay, that took ages. Oh, here I am. That took ages, but I think it's done. I just need to try it on. Yay! Let's see the final products.
Y'all, there's the stuff you learn while sewing, and then there's the stuff you learn while filming the final product, and what I have learned during this final product is that I have way too many skirts. I gotta stop doing these versatility projects. Changing clothes wears me out, so changing clothes like 50 times in the space of two hours is exhausting. On another note, I feel like a pretty pretty princess. Yay! I'd forgotten how much I love this yellow skirt. I don't think I've worn it since I made it because it feels like too fancy just because it's like satiny and it's T-length and it's very very full. So it's like this isn't a wear it to dinner kind of skirt. It's a little too much for that. But then it's not quite a formal event kind of skirt either. Not that I've been to any formal events recently. I don't know, I just haven't worn it and I should because I freaking love it. Anyway, I don't really have anywhere to clip this. I guess I should rank them. Uh, the white one, seven out of 10. I think I will wear it. It's actually pretty comfortable, but I do think that I need to rethink the exact shape of those front triangles for a wrap shirt. Right now they just, when you put it on, they kind of want to point downward. So then when you try to point them more upward or just like straight across so they can wrap, you end up with gaping here. Because it's a little bit stretchy, I can pull it really tight and make that go away and make it look okay. But I think it just needs to be a different shape. Actually, overall, for this whole project really reminded me of how much I need a mannequin. I stick with skirts because you quite often only need one measurement, your waist. There's so much more complexity to our torsos. I just think it'll be super helpful to be able to pattern things out on a mannequin that is exactly my size. It would solve a lot of the problems. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I keep dying. My voice just like keeps fading into nothingness. Ugh. Let me just chug water to see if that helps. I don't know what that's about. What was I saying? Patterning out on a mannequin, I think will be very helpful in the future. Uh, the teal one, five out of 10. This one could have used the mannequin most of all. It doesn't fit right. It's like gapy in places. I like the overall design of it. So much so that once I do have a mannequin I can do stuff on, I'd like to remake it. But yeah, stuff is just, it's not laying right. It's not stretching right. I think I didn't allow for the knit to stretch as much as it wants to. Yeah, five out of 10. The pink one, um, eight out of 10. I think it's pretty close to being what I want. The crop style in general for all of these pieces is definitely something I haven't worn much in the past. So like I have to get used to that cutoff line or rather to just not tucking Hi. Bye. Not tucking my shirt into my skirt, having it just kind of meet right there. But I think it's really cute. Um, it fits comfortably. I do think that doing the drawstring up here is a little less comfortable than doing elastic. I think they would be just like a little bit more ease with elastic, of course, because it's elastic. That being said, I do think the fact that it's a drawstring and it's not stretchy helps it stay right here. Like for an off the shoulder shirt, Normally you're kind of like, mm, this is gonna fall off me at any second. And this one really doesn't feel like that at all. It's fine. Now there's something in my eye. Yo, I'm having problems tonight. It's a sign to wrap this up. And the bonus piece, I'll give it another five out of 10 because again, design was fine. Design was simple. The construction was even fine. I just made it too small. So even now it is like, on me. It is stretching way too much. It's cutting into my armpits, but I could easily remake that in the future with a different fabric and use that as my guide and just know that like I need to add another couple inches at least around and then it's super cute. That's okay, we live and we learn and I will do better next time. So yeah, that was fun. I clearly need to go and I don't know, eat dinner, drink water, get whatever is in my eye out of my eye. Ugh, what's happening to me? But y'all, I say this with 99% surety, there's always that 1%. This was the last project in this house. <sighs> this was my last time doing final product in front of my curtain that's in front of the laundry. Laundry, hello? Laundry. I gotta find a new place in the new house to film all my final products. What do you think? Do you like the curtain or should I do like a blank wall? I could in theory do like a cool painting on a wall or cool wallpaper. I don't know. These are all the thoughts that are like running around in my head right now that I can't do anything about because we still haven't closed on the house. <laughs>
thanks for joining me during these last several weeks of distraction sewing. Yay! I will see y'all next week. Bye! Ow! Ow! Yeah! Wow! I am out of it. I love checks and skirts. Bleh, stripes. Checks. Yes, I love it. Nom 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 nom.